Welcome, Sepul Nation. Can you hear me? If you can, leave a message here in the comment box, please. Thank you. My name is Bruno. I'm part of the Sepultura team. Uh, today, our live Q&A is with Eloy Casagrande. Ask your questions here in the comment box. Uh, please be polite to each other and enjoy your Sepul Quarta. I'm going to leave a quick message for our Brazilian fans here in Portuguese. Bem-vindo, Sepul Nation. Eu sou o Bruno, parte da equipe do Sepultura. E hoje o nosso Q&A, né, as perguntas e respostas, é com o Eloy Casagrande. Então, vocês mandem as suas perguntas aqui nas, na caixa de comentários. Sejam educados uns com os outros, por favor. E aproveitem bastante a Sepul Quarta. E depois tem Refuse Resist. Hello, Sepul family. Hello, Sepul família. How are you guys doing? Everybody alive, surviving this period, this moment? Uh, I'm doing good. Uh, thank you for asking. So let's start our Q&A at the Sepul Quarta, our weekly program. And I'm really happy to be here with you for the first time. Uh, so here comes the first question from Gaia, Max super dope. Thank you for doing this chat and for what do you do for the drumming community around the world? Did you grow up with metal? If not, how did you discover it? Uh, actually, my first contact with drums, with music, uh, was through Brazilian music. Um, I started playing the drums when I was seven years old and until my 12 years old, I was only playing Brazilian uh, music, Brazilian rhythms. And I, I think I discovered metal music uh, when I was 13 years old, and that changed my life. Uh, before that, of course, uh, I was a big fan of like rock in general, like uh, Black Sabbath, Van Halen, Deep Purple, um, Led Zeppelin. And but uh, when I was 13 years old, that was when I discovered metal uh, through Metallica, Iron Maiden, uh, Meshuga um what else i don't know but um uh, that was it and uh that changed my life you know i think like uh metal really um really uh, fits in my style of playing the drums i like to play like uh, no high volume uh so it's something that is really natural for me like to playing with power playing with energy so metal fits into my style of playing the drums and um uh, that's it. Cool. Marcus Crispler. Great Marcus. Hello, cheers from Germany. How do you keep in shape for your physical, very demanding style of drumming? Uh, what I do to keep in shape uh, when I'm like before uh, a tour or before I have a show with Sepultura, I like to, to have like a, at least one week uh, preparation to do it so i like to play the drums every day you know that's my my secret actually there is not a secret i i just play like that every day uh and to play i, I believe to play any kind of instrument but uh even more like drums that is such a physical instrument you have to be in like in constantly contact with the, the with the drums with the instrument so that's what i do i'm always playing the drums like every day uh, some sometimes when I miss like one or two days, it's really bad for me. When I try to, but when I come back, when I start playing the drums again, I feel like I have been like days or weeks without playing, and I have to spend a lot of time like uh, returning from where I was before. So I prefer to play the drums every day. That really helps me to keep in shape. Apart of the drums, I also go to the gym. I work out. And uh, that, that helps me to don't have like uh, uh, pain on my tendons to, to keep me strong. So I also can like uh, play the way I, I want to play. Marcos, miss you, brother. 
Lucas Cavalcante, is that a Sepultura song that you never played live, but it, would you like to? Uh, yeah, uh, we just released our new album, Quadra, and we didn't have the opportunity to play that album live yet. So that's going to happen after all this craziness that is going uh, through the world. Uh, maybe like all the, the Quadra songs, I really want to play this album like live. And uh, we're going to do it um, in the near future, I believe. But um, I'm, I'm looking forward to playing maybe um, Agony of Death. Uh, no. Uh, oh, I forgot the name of the song. My, my mind is kind of like... Uh, Agony of the Feet. Agony of the Feet. Agonia dos Pés. Agony of the Feet. <laughs> Bella Piada. And uh, I'd like to play Agony of the Feet. And um, what else? Uh, uh, I don't know, like all the, the Quadra songs. And uh, that's it, Lucas. Thank you for asking me a question. Which is the hardest old song to play? Bruno Rocha. That's a difficult question. Old song, like, what do you mean by old? It can be like two years ago or 25 years ago, but I, I understood your question. Um, Maybe the songs from the album um, The Beneath the Remains, they are kind of fast, you know, back there, the, the band, like uh, all the, the guys, they were really young and they were aiming to, to play fast stuff, like thrash death metal. So like technically Beneath the Remains is the one of the, the most difficult ones. Uh, and, and that's it. I believe like the, 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 the fastest songs they are on Beneath the Remains and on the Rise. Actually, for me, it's easier to play the songs that are, I created, you know, because that's something that it's natural for me when I recorded on the albums. That's myself, you know, so it's, it's much easier to play what I compose instead of playing uh, other drummers' creation. So yeah, that was it. Bruno Rocha, thank you. Rafael Lima, hey Eloy, I hope you're doing fine. I'm a young Sepultura fan like you. Yeah, I was born after the, re the release of Arise. How was your first contact with Sepultura material? Man, Rafael, that was back in 2000, the year of 2001. And uh, I remember that I was only 10 years old or 11 years old. And I really wanted to discover Sepultura, you know, to listen to Sepultura. But uh, somehow, like here in, in Brazil, like uh, my parents, they were a little bit like concerned. They had like a, they were worried about me to listen to Sepultura, to be like, to, to be too aggressive, but they were wrong. You know, like the, that's some, somehow like a, a kind of, um, you know, a wrong, wrong idea about our music. So I remember that I went to a album store, a CD store, and I bought the album Sepulnation because it was released back in 2001. So that was my first contact with Sepultura uh, through the album Sepulnation. And after that, I went all the way back. I went to, to listen to Beneath the Remains, Arise, uh, Roots, Chaos AD. But uh, I started through uh, Sepulnation. That was my first album. Thank you, Rafael, for your question. Derek Green, Big House, yeah. Hello, Derek Green. How are you doing? <laughs> I miss you, brother. Marcos Cabral, your library behind you. What the book more deeply relation with Sepultura style? I don't know. <laughs> That's a difficult question. But uh, actually, right now, I'm reading a Portuguese writer, Fernando Pessoa. Livro do Desassossego, it's very good. And uh, what I can relate to Sepultura, let me see, let me take a look. Um, I really like philosophy. So something that I, I have been reading for the, the last years, the recent years, um, I'll tell Albert Camus, Albert Camus, French writer, he's really good, incredible. And he talks a lot about the human condition, you know, our very shit condition. Uh, let me see another something else to tell you. Um, here we have Nietzsche uh, talking about the moral. 
let me see another one here see here, here on the top we have oh, i don't know man it's really difficult like, to to make like a connection with sepultura yeah those two are good those two are good for now kami and niche marcos Ladislav, hi from Slovakia. Slovakia, I hope you will be in Sepultura for next 50 years. No, I'll be too old to be in Sepultura then. <laughs> I'll not be able to play the, the fast songs. There's no other drummer who can replace you. And that would be a big problem for boys. Yeah, thank you. Do you have other some hobbies? Uh, thank you, Ladislav. I really appreciate what you just said. And uh, yeah, uh, I want to uh, definitely spend my next 50 years playing Sepultura. And about my hobbies, I can tell you that I, I like to read. That is maybe is my first hobby. Uh, I also like to work out, to go to the gym. And, um, and the rest of my time I'm like working, you know, I have, I'm playing. Uh, I really like to be in connection with my instrument. So that's what I did the most, uh, to sit on the drums and play, do music, create. And I also like to write some stuff. Uh, actually, I have like um, I have a, a online uh, website. Of course, it's online. A website where I I have a lot of students, like drums students. So I give classes, online classes. So I also spend a lot a lot of time on that. And, and that's it, Ladislavi. Thank you for the question. Next, next. Next, Shisto Pinto. Pinto is in the house, not in my house, in yours, maybe. Ah. Fala Pinto. Well, saudade, caralho. Laine Pereira, hello. How did you build your drum tone and your signature in these endless seas of drummers? By the way, you are an outstanding musician. Outstanding! I love that word. Liner, Liner, thank you, thank you. You, uh, I don't know how how did I achieve my my signature on the, on the drums. I think that's that came to me in a very natural way. You know, I was never like looking for a signature. I think that's wrong. When you are like a, like looking for something, like we only have like a a goal in art. That's like I don't know. When I'm composing, when I'm I'm creating, I'm only um, like it's something that I, I do in a very naturally natural way. I'm I'm totally outside of of my mind, outside of my body. Um, I, I don't know, man. I'm, that's something that really it's really difficult to explain. But uh, what I can tell you is that I'm always uh, really tired of being myself. You know, like playing the same stuff every day. That really annoys me. I I don't like that. Uh, I would like to be a different like drummer, to be a different person every day. That's my main goal, you know, in life, I can tell you. Um, it's, uh, it's really difficult to, to tell you if I have like a, a material dream, like to achieve a place, to uh, achieve a certain level of like, uh, I don't know, like uh, a famous or money. You know, I never had that, but I, I always live with that, with the, 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 the my creation process you know like every day i want to be a different musician so maybe that's how i achieve i uh, i'm like changing my my signature on drums you know it's it's constantly uh changing rafael coutinho eloy do you like some soccer team sepultura needs a corinthians fun to fight with andreas and derek uh that's a difficult question that can really uh, uh i don't know man I used to 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 like more soccer, but uh, nowadays uh, I don't follow anymore the soccer football, and I don't have like any like contact with that, and uh, I prefer to to stay away of that because like like you said, it can really like became a fight inside Sepultura. <laughs> it's a, a a very serious uh, serious. Um, talk you know so i prefer to stay away from soccer football next damn 
are you guys going to release the 30 years concert in Blu-ray DVD? I have no idea. I have no idea. Bruno, can you help me with that one? Because I, I really don't know. Uh, no, I have no idea. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but uh, probably we're going to release the Quadra concert like very soon, <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> but but we, have sure the, we have Sepultura Endurance, the documentary on Netflix, right? Yes, have, like, right. A few songs from, the, from that concert. Yes, right. So you can watch the Endurance uh, movie on Netflix. And maybe you're going to release the Quadra concert like pretty soon, very soon. Slavic CC. How does it feel to be the youngest key member of Sepultura? Was it quite intimidating to feel in the shoes as a drummer? Yeah, man. When I joined the band, I was only 20 years old. And uh, that was quite intimidating. And um, um, I felt somehow like some kind of pressure coming from the fans, from the, the, the people that, that have been following Sepultura for 30 years. And um, that was like somehow difficult at the beginning, you know. Uh, first, first because I was only 20 years old, and I was really like anxious to play with such a band like that's really important uh, for the world, for the metal style, you know. So when I joined the band, I I totally felt the pressure, but uh, I had like a total support from the band members, from Andreas, from Paulo, from Derek. They really helped me at the beginning and, and through the first years of the, uh, the end up that was that was great man nowadays I, I believe that i have a total support from the fans and from the band and i can play whatever i i wanted i want so yeah man it have been really good have been i have fun <laughs> alberto herrera and current favorite drummer do you like a death metal drummer, black metal drummer, group drummer, heavy. Oh, yeah, man. Uh, there are some really uh, crazy Brazilian drummers that I can tell you. Uh, Alberto, I don't know from uh, where, where are you from, but uh, if you look on Instagram, Daniel Pinheiro is a very good drummer. Um, Bruno Brusi, uh, incredible drummer. Uh, Matheus Falcão, some crazy new generation of drummers. Uh, death metal, uh, I don't know, man. Like, I have like a, a Mario Duplantier from Bohira, who was he's one of my favorite metal drummers. Thomas Hack from Meshuga. Uh, from like old death metal, my favorite drummer is Bill Ward from Black Sabbath. I I love him, and with Vinny Epis, groove drummer. I really like Benny Grab. He's incredible, and and that's it, man. Alberto Herrera, thank you for sending the question. Tai Esea, what made you choose to be a drummer musician? Well, I, I don't know. I really don't know. I think that was a, a natural thing. You know, you never choose to be a musician. You are chosen by the music, and uh, that happened when I was like uh, I don't know. Like I started playing when I was seven years old, but I, I decided to be a drummer, a musician when I was thirteen, fourteen years old. Uh, and um, actually, I don't have like a a, a question for the, uh, an answer for that. That's that's really difficult. Um, actually, as I told you, you know. Um, if you like, first of all, I never thought about like being a musician, you know, that's something that I, my life, like I was just playing, playing with different musicians, going through different bands. And at some point I was so involved with music, like in creating and playing with other, other guys, uh, participating at different, uh, drums, drum contests. At some point I was inside the, the music universe and I, I couldn't go out. You know, so actually I didn't have a choice. That's what I love to do. That's my my reason to, to be alive. That's how like when, when I sit on the drums, I don't I don't need anything else. That's when I, I have all my happiness, all my my like the best stuff of my life, you know, really comes from the drums, from from music. 
So that's it. That's not a choice. That that's something natural, you know. Thank you. Edilson, meu carequinha predileto. Edilson, hi Eloy, miss you. Do you always find space to improvise? Spectacular. Will it be like that in Quadra Life? Big hug, my friend. Uh, yes, I always find some space to improvise. As I told here before, uh, the live, that I really like to be a different musician. Every night I play, every day I'm playing. So during the concerts, I always like to play something different, like to, to improvise a little bit. Um, sometimes I do mistakes. That's something natural, you know, that, that happens, shit happens. But uh, I take like the mistakes as a good way, a, a good thing, you know, because when you're like making mistakes, you are trying to go beyond. You are trying to go like through your limits, you know, to somehow like to transcend, you know. So that for me is like supernatural, like a common thing to do mistakes. And I'm, I'm not afraid to do mistakes. So I always like to improvise. And when something like goes right, like I, uh, um, something new that I'm playing during the concert, I have a, a, a amazing feeling about that. You know, it's like, oh my God, that really happened. You know, and uh, that really gives me energy to play the rest of the show and to give you, to give a hundred percent of myself. So, valeu Edilson, nice mano. Bel Silveira, tell us about your tattoos. They they are very pretty. Oh, thank you. That's a, a tattoo from, from my friend uh, Edu from Rio de Janeiro. He did this tattoo. It's like a, a biomechanical tattoo. Can you see the... Let me... Oh, I'm so strong right now. <laughs> Just kidding. It's like a biomechanical, you know, but I, I need to finish here. It's incomplete. You know, on my other arm... You have this, this pretty girl here that she's my wife. No, I'm just kidding. But that's like my my the, my goddess. And what else? Oh, I, I have some arrows in here. And that was an accident like a few days ago. <laughs> and thank you, Bell, for sending uh, your question. João Pedro Tavares. Hi, Aloy. Hope you are good. Since you joined Sepultura, you had the opportunity to play in a huge festival. Festivals. Which one you like it more? Greetings from Salvador. Valeu, João. Salvador, big hug, my friend. Uh, man, I think my my the, the 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 first festival that I like huge festival that I have the opportunity to play was in Rock in Rio back in 2011 when I played with Gloria. And I have been playing like we uh, in Se with Sepultura in so many different rocking reels. And um, we did uh, once in 2013, we did the rocking reel Brazil uh, uh, with like the Tambores do Bronx that we recorded the live DVD. That was amazing. That was insane. Also, we played in rocking reel in 2015 uh, in Las Vegas and we played with Steve Vai. And that one is like unforgettable moment. And also to play a Vakin, man, Vakin is like surreal. Like that's huge, like really big. Um, what else? Sweden Rock, um, Download Fest. And yeah, man. Yeah, those festivals, like the. But I, I also like to play at small venues. They are they are also like really important, you know. And you have a different vibe when you like have a like a directly contact with the the audience. You, you can look at the at your fans like look look at them to their eyes, you know. That's really a, a different um, uh, vibe. So I I also like to play at huge festivals, but I I give a lot of importance to play at small venues. They, they like feels great, you know, and that's it, man. Salvador, thank you. MD Gildis, hi Aloy. How did you make the insane drums for manipulation of tragedy? Did you try to make it difficult for yourself? No, like that's not the point, you know. I'm, I'm never trying to make something difficult, like just by being difficult, not difficulty by difficulty. That's not how it works, and um. Uh, 
how I made that, I have no idea. That was like many years ago, but uh, I know I don't know. I was playing some some six tuplets um, on my double pedal, and uh, and that groove just appeared. You know, like that insane that, that groove where I use the chokes when I I hold the cymbals, and I don't know. That's a, a moment of creation, and I don't have control over that. That somehow it just appears. And uh, and the people they constantly ask me like, are you really trying to make like difficult songs? No, that's I'm just being myself. I'm aiming to do difficult things, difficult drum parts, and uh, that's not my objective. That's not not my point. But uh, if you think it's difficult, uh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Next question, Rashid uh, Aljassas. Greetings from. YT, awesome man. Metal is a, such a universal language, bringing people together from all around the globe. Grant Award is the best place to perform. Oh, I think like everywhere is, is really good to perform, you know, like uh, different countries, they have like different feelings of playing live. I really like to play in South America, especially in my country, Brazil. I love this place. So it's always really good, good to play in South America, Mexico, Europe. I like everywhere, man. Last year we had the opportunity to go to Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, uh, Mongolia, to Turkey, Russia. And it's also like really crazy to play like in places where bands, they usually don't go. Uh, you, you are able to have contact with like some people, some fans that they, they never had the opportunity to watch a metal show, you know. So, man, like every place uh, has a, a different touch, a different thing. And I, I really like to play live. You know, I think like uh, myself being a musician, that's the the place where I have more joy in my life. You know, to to be in contact with my with the audience, with the fans, like to play live, changing energy, and that's what we're living for. You know, to live art actually. You don't like be at, at home and uh, I don't know, man. Uh, for me to, to play shows like the, the, the most fulfilling uh, stuff for my life. Rashid, thank you. And thank you from Kuwait. Ricardo Salvador Levino, will you be alone in the shed or a sound will roll a performance? Uh, yeah, after when I finish the, the talk here, the Q&A, we're going to play the song Refuse Resist. Each one of us, us four, the Sepultura members, we recorded at home, like separately. And uh, Bruno, he put all together. So it's going to be like a, a live performance of the song Refuse Resist. But we did at home. I did like a few days ago. And uh, that's really cool because like we are doing it like in a very, um, how can I say, uh, not professional way, you know, uh, we are just musicians, we are only musicians, so we can do the best we can. But I, I recorded it at my studio, like in a very simple way with only one microphone. So I don't know how the, the rest of the guys, they did it, but we are doing like to stay at home, you know, we are not living, we are not like getting outside. Here in Sao Paulo, the situation is pretty bad. So I'm respecting the isolation and uh, that's it. Uh, we are trying to like to, to, to have this contact with you to keep that, that energy between the band and the fans. So after that, we're going to play with Fuse Resist. It's going to be around 5, 5.30, 5.30, yeah, something like that. 5.30 Brazilian time. So stay here with us, Ricardo Salvador. Next question, Don Corleone, what's your favorite band? Uh, I don't have a favorite band. I have some favorite bands. Maybe it's Black Sabbath. <laughs> Black Sabbath, Dio, uh, Deep Purple. Um, I don't know, man. Alice in Chains. Uh, and that's it. Thank you, Don Corleone, for coming here. Enrique Cruz, how Andre Matos discovered you and invited, invited you to join his band? Enrique, that was back in 2006. I was only 15 years old. 
And uh, back there, I was playing at some TV programs here in Brazil. I was playing in Faustão. If you're Brazilian, you know who Faustão is. He's one of the, the most, I don't know, like unique persons in the world. And, uh, and I went there to, do, uh, uh, to play a small drum solo. I don't remember like for what, for what reason I was doing that, but I went there. And, and if you know YZ, like the producer, uh, he, back there he was producing Andre Matos' album. And he watched me on global television, you know, and he called Andre Matos and he said to him, man, you need to do an audition with Aloy. I saw like a kid on the, the television playing the drums. And like after one day, I got a, a call from like um, the manager from Andre Matos uh, asking me if I, I wanted to do an audition. And I went there like with my parents. I remember that I, I was really young, uh, had only 14, 15 years old. And I, I play with the band, you know, and I, I remember that I, after the audition that the guys, they, they gave me okay, that I, I was like on the band. Uh, I went to talk with Andre. I asked him like, man, are you sure that you want a, a 15 old like, kid playing your band? I'm not sure if I, I, if I can handle that, you know, I'm, I'm too young. I, I have never traveled. Uh, I don't know how it's going to be, but like, are you sure of that? And he said like, no, man, I believe in you. So he was the first guy that gave me the opportunity to, to be a professional musician and to play in a band, like to, to, to play like a, in, a, in, a, in a proper band, you know, to don't play covers, to, to live music by like itself, you know, to, to live art. So he was such a, a great human being, great guy. And uh, that's, he's a legend right now, you know. Thank you, Henrique Cruz. João Pedro Tavares, I asked this question to Derek last Sepult Quarta, but I want to hear from you too. How was to play at Salvador Carnival with Angra and Carlinhos Brown? I was there and it was amazing. Thanks, man. Man, that was such a, a great uh, uh, thing, you know, for you, like outside of Brazil, in Salvador. Here in Brazil, we have like a, a great, like a huge carnival party and uh, many bands, like local bands, they go like on, on top of, of trucks like plane you know uh, by the side of the, the trucks you have like uh, a huge pa system and the, the band go, goes on the top playing for like uh, thousands of people and uh, these trucks they like the they go like through the city and that's insane man that that's the salvador carnival and we had the, the opportunity like uh, three years ago three four years ago to play with angra and carlinhos brown on top of that the truck the ashe truck and uh, that was like a unique, a unique thing because I, I believe like never before they had a metal band playing on the carnival, Salvador Carnival. And that was insane, man. We had like thousands of metal fans following us. Uh, and uh, that was great, man. Also, we were like, uh, like uh, going through like a place uh, th that was only a chef fans, like Brazilian uh, people that they wanted to, to listen to Asha music, like the, our typical music here in Brazil, you know? And they were like respecting us. It was like, okay, what is happening? Is that a metal band playing Sepultura? Cool, I'm, a, I'm here, like, a, let, me, let me listen to them. And uh, they, they, like, we had a, a very, um, uh, I don't know, man, that was a, a unique thing that was so good. So such a, a great energy. Thank you, João, for sending the question. Bruno Rocha, Bruno Rocha, how many stickers do you break in a show? Uh, stickers, no, sticks you break in a show. Man, it depends on how angry I am. But uh, I think I break like one pair a show, one pair, like two pairs a show, depends a lot, you know. But uh, between that, like two, one or two, two pairs a show. Carlos Gonzaga, hi Eloy, are there any cover songs that the band rehearsal but didn't go to the Quadra album? Peace, greetings from São José dos Campos. Aê, Carlos, São José. Uh, no, I don't think so. We had the idea to do a, a cover song on the album, but uh, like during the process, we just gave it up. You know, we were really happy with our stuff, with, uh, with the music that we created for the album. So we, we, at the end, we decided to don't do a, a, cover, a cover song. And uh, I don't remember, like, 
uh, I think we we didn't get like to a point where we we had a, a specific idea about a song, but uh, we gave up during the <laughs> the creation process. So, but that was it. Uh, we really like to to also play cover songs to do our version of cover music, but not not at, at this time. Maybe next one. Okay. Thank you, Carlos. Bravit is the soul of wit. How do you come up with the song titles for the instrumentals? Man, I don't know. Uh, last time oh, on the on the Quadra album, we have the song Pentagram, and Pentagram is like a it's like an analogy, like a uh, between Quadra, you know, Quadra four. So Quadra means like uh, uh, fourth, like four in Portuguese. So also it's like a, a, a analogy to pentagram, like five, because the song is in five four. It's in a, in a music formula, you know. So that's the reason why it's called pentagram. And also pentagrams like from like demon that stuff, <laughs> like heavy stuff, you know, man. And also uh, the what's the name of the the song that we had on the um, Machine Messiah, the instrumental song of Machine Messiah? Iceberg Dance. Uh, Iceberg dances, great Bruno. You are like the God, like the voice of God that comes here to help me. <laughs> and iceberg dances because it's like such a, 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 a not a difficult song to play. I, I don't consider it difficult. Like yeah, somehow it's, it's difficult. I'll, I'll be like uh, lying to you if I, I I would say it's not difficult. It's kind of difficult, but uh, it's like like dancing, like like uh, iceberg da dancing. You know. I don't know like where that came from. Maybe we were really high on that day, but uh, <laughs> but it, it talks about like the, the dancing of the, the ice icebergs, and it's like a, a very uh, it's a song that we play a lot of different Brazilian rhythms. So we, maybe you can dance uh, that music. I don't know. I don't. I really don't know. I'm, I'm I think I'm telling you lies, but but that, that, that's it. <laughs> Next, Jeff Bayer, are you working on any new music during quarantine? uh actually with sepultura no we are not working in any new uh new music but i have been doing like a a thing on my instagram the, that i'm i'm calling jam you know like uh, i have been posting some drum grooves some different drum grooves like one minute video and uh and the people can download my video and they can like write on top of my drums they can like play any instrument on top of my groove so I have been like uh, getting a lot of like crazy stuff and good stuff from musicians all over the world, um, like guitar players, ba ba bass players, piano players, um, uh, acoustic guitar uh, players. So it's really it has been amazing. If you wanna check it out, go to my Instagram, and if you're a musician, download the video. Uh, I I I put there my the, the download uh, link, so you can play with me and we can do new music together. Thank you, Jeff, for sending your question. Next one, TLZ Hickman. Is there a typical way that songs come together for Sepultura? Congrats on the album of the year. Thank you, I really appreciate that. Uh, there is a typical way. No, there is not a typical way. Uh, normally, all the songs, they come from the drums or from the guitar, like, um, when we are off, when we are not playing, like uh, we're traveling, doing tours, when we are not doing shows, and uh, when I'm back home, we are back home, I like to sit on my drums and to compose, do new stuff. E, what happened? Oh, that's the time to, to do the... Bruno, what's happening? <laughs> In a few moments, now. or you can go on. In a few moments, we're okay. going to talk. Bit about our okay, okay. let me let me let me finish this question and you we, we can go Don't there. Uh, so when I'm like when I have some free time at home, when I am when I'm able to play the drums to compose, uh, I like to record those ideas. You know, I have like a with my phone or with a recorder, I like to record all those ideas. So when we get to the moment to compose the new album, I send all those grooves, those licks to Andreas. And he write like uh, guitar riffs on top of it, and also Andreas he sent me some guitar riffs so I can compose on top of his stuff. So that's like uh, like like the 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 way that Sepultura songs uh, are born. 
and also like sometimes we are jamming we're just playing together at the rehearsal and um and suddenly something comes up something like appears and i and i, I love to do it man maybe that's one of the like my favorite like moment of of playing the drums the, my favorite moment of living art you know like before you have nothing and then you like you have something you have a song you know you have like a, a piece of art so that's maybe my favorite moment of like playing the drums of playing an instrument and that's how like the sepultura songs come up they appear bruno do you want to talk about the sepo store it's time for, for yeah, selling I, stuff yeah man let's talk a little I'll bit of our stuff man hell yeah <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about our merchandising here. You know, you can visit sepultura.com.br slash sepulquarta. Then you have all the links there for our official stores in Europe, USA, Brazil, and Australia. So the first one that I put on the screen when, while we were talking was our European store so have like tons of cool stuff over there even like the the quadro vinyls you know good stuff man i asked derek last week do you have your vinyl from quadra <laughs> no not yet man i don't Me have either. nothing from quadra i don't have a cd i don't have a lp i have nothing I, ha I think I have one T-shirt, ju just once, just one. You're better than I, you know, I have nothing here. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately. Hey, Nuclear Blast, send me something, Jesus Christ. And here you have like our star on North America, United States, have like the, the merchandise from our postponed tour. Great. check it out you have like some packs you know help help the musicians feed the yeah. musicians <laughs> and in the first video it's really important right now for like for the sepo nation to to help you know the bands and help other bands that that people like right yeah exactly man uh yeah all the musicians i believe like we were the, the first ones to be affected by this moment like we were the first ones to like to cancel to postpone it to postpone our tours so that's like a, a way that we can like still survive you know like also help the crew to help the, the all the the people that work with us it's not 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 only the the four members you know we have like a uh a lot of people that like support the the sepultura that live with us so that's for like all the the, the sepul family yeah, I'm gonna speak a little in Portuguese really quick. We have temos aqui a nossa a Sepul Store, né, a loja aqui no Brasil, que já tem produtos do Quadra, tem até chocolate lá, que eu ainda não tenho também. Pedi para Ana me mandar. E tem bastante Ei, coisa. Tem pele de bateria que você usou nos shows, autografado para quem quiser. Cerveja, mas eu acho que o que mais importante a gente mostrar aqui Camiseta do Quadra. Olha que legal. Essa camiseta é bacana, hein? Tem bom gosto. É boa banda, né? Legal. So, let's come back to the to the Q&A. Q&A. Then, and we have like Aê. lots, lots and tons of questions here. That's good. Uh, let me see the next one. A good one, Bruno. The best one. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, there's some questions that people were were not in the beginning of the live. Will they miss that? Talking about Jim. Yeah. Yeah, I think you you already said about that, but I think it's great too. Tiago, how's the experience of playing huge festivals? Ah, okay. How was the experience of playing huge festivals in small place? Which one do you prefer? 
Um, I like both, man. I like to play in like both situations. Um, they both like bring me joy, you know. When you play in small places, small venues, that also happens with Sepultura. Maybe when we are like touring and playing on the on the festivals in Europe, and uh, we are like traveling long distances, and uh, between like those big travelings, like those long distances, we we need to stop, and uh, so we we take the opportunity to play in small venues. You know, so sometimes we play in venues for like 200 people, uh, 100 and, and 500, 100 and 500, you know, and, and it's, it's really good, man, because you have like a straight contact with the, the with, with people. Uh, you are playing like really close from the audience. So like the, the idea, the, the energy like flows a lot. Uh, you change a lot of energy with people. So that's amazing. And also um, when you play in big festivals, that that's an amazing feeling that like you see like that sea of people, you know, that's like, that's amazing. It's, it's like he, sometimes I, I feel a lot of energy, like a lot of, uh, a little bit anxious to play in huge, huge festivals. And it, it's like surreal, man. Sometimes the adrenaline is so high that after the show, I don't remember what just happened. Uh, I get out, of, I get out of the stage and I'm like, oh my God, what happened? Because I don't remember. You know, so it's uh, like, different situations and I, I love both talk about guardians of the earth please good vibe carla franzoi yeah that's a, a song that i like maybe it's not my favorite song of the album but um i like that song guardians of the earth and talks about like taking care of the mother nature you know and uh, uh that, that the song starts with the acoustic guitar from andreas and it's amazing piece that he did like to start a song i love that part maybe that's my favorite part of the song i like when i started playing i don't like i prefer like the andreas could play this the whole song by himself <laughs> uh, it's a really good composition from andreas i think he came he came up with that song that it was a, an idea that uh, was born from from himself so that's it it's like a, a medium tempo song and uh, there are some like good parts in the middle uh, when we play the, the guitar solo that's like a, a beautiful again a beautiful guitar solo from andreas and and that's it that's a, a song that uh, i really want to play live we actually were rehearsing that song uh, before the the tool like uh, being postponed so uh, in the future near future gonna be able to play that for you live Next one, Bruno. Tiago, sonho. Oh, Tiago, sonho. Fala, brother. What about your future as, as an awesome drummer? Do you have some plans for the future? Maybe a, a solo album? Uh, man, I don't have, I have I don't have any plan for my future, actually. I, 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 I like to be in the present, you know? And for me, it's really difficult to be a present musician, to be a present human being. And uh, to take like really advantage of that, like to to have joy in the, in the this moment right now, you know. And uh, I I think I I have I have this feeling for I have this like this thought my whole life. I never had like a a dream or like a um, a plan for the future. I'm just doing music, you know. I'm just like uh, living art and and trying to be a present person, a present uh, musician, and. Like many times I felt in the past that I was not a, a present musician. When I was playing shows or uh, doing like uh, uh, recording sessions, I was never like living the moment, like having fun with the other musicians or like uh, looking at the audience. And like from some years um, ago, I, I, I started to, to, uh, to try that like even harder to, to be here now, you know, so that's my... My, my biggest plan to to be alive now to be living like properly you know and maybe a solo album yeah that's a good idea maybe i, I want to do a solo album um, um i don't know how i'm gonna do it and uh but uh yes i definitely want to do uh solo stuff and thank you thank you thiago sonho i, I hope you're good man espero que você esteja bem aí thiago abraço véi Next question, Ricardo Barbosa. Have you met some of your heroes on the road? Oh, yes, man. Um, back in 2006, I was playing with Andre Matos 
in Japan, and uh, I had the the opportunity to met uh, Heaven and Hell, like Black Sabbath, and I met Gio, uh, Tonayomi, Kizer Butler, and Vinnie Epis. That was crazy, man. I, actually, I didn't met him, but uh, at least I like I could like shake their hands, and for me that that, that was like amazing, like, one of the best moments of my life. And uh, also, man, I had the opportunity to like to to meet uh, the whole Metallica, to like have dinner with them. Uh, Metallica, Slayer, um, um, what else? Uh, ah, all these, all the metal bands, man. It's some like many years ago when I started playing with Sepultura, that was crazy for me, you know. Like uh, when we played 2012, when we played at Rock in Rio, Lis Lisbon. Uh, we were invited by Metallica to go to go out to dinner to, with them, to have a dinner with them. And I was in shock. It's like, oh my God, I'm having a dinner with Metallica. But for the rest of the guys, that was something like normal, you know, that's something common for them. And uh, I remember that I was in shock. But for now, for now for me, it's something like normal, like to live between other metal bands, rock bands. And it, it's, all, it's also a, a privilege. And, um, and I'm... And I, I'm really thankful for that, you know. But uh, like meeting uh, Black Sabbath was one of my one of my dreams. And that's it, Ricardo. Thank you, man. Marcelo Veloso Lopes. Hey, Eloy, have you ever thought about making a song entirely in Portuguese? Hugs from São Paulo. Valeu, Marcelo Veloso Lopes. Aí, meu chá, meu meu, meu parente. Uh, Man, yes, we I think we thought about making a whole uh, Portuguese song. Maybe it's gonna come like in the next album, and uh, it's really uh, man, I don't know. Uh, maybe like Derek, by the fact that he's American, and it's much easier for him like to to write songs in English, and it's also easier for him to sing it in English, uh, and also it's like more somehow like a universal language. But uh, we, yeah, for sure, we want to do a, a Portuguese song, maybe in the near future. And uh, we, we, we really like to, to play in Brazil. Like, definitely, it's one of our favorite places to, to be, to live. And, and uh, yeah, why not like to, to, to do something in our home language? Right? Thank you, Marcelo. Jean Rajepo. Do you have any tips for a person who wants to learn to play drums without a drums in this quarantine? Ah, uh, man, yeah, definitely. You can use uh, a sofa, you can use your couch, you can use like, uh, I don't know, your bed to simulate the drums, you know? And it's really difficult like to actually to play a drums without a drums, but you can study technique, uh, you know? Like you can have a drumstick and really go into all the the, the, the what we call the rudiments of the drums, paradiddles, singles, doubles, like different notes, different patterns that you actually don't need a drums to practice. So that's a good idea, man. You can like um, find an online teacher and and start like doing it, uh, uh, creating your like uh, your drums technique, you know. Or you can buy a uh, uh, electronic drums that you can set up in at your house, and that would be good as well. Okay, thank you, Jean. Jim. Next, Bruno. Next. Ah, Sasha. Hello, Sasha from Australia. Good morning from Australia. I've been playing in tune from such a young age. How do you feel? It's influencing you growing up. Much love, much love and horns. Yeah. Uh, I it, somehow it changed my life for sure, Sasha. Uh, when you start like traveling and meeting different people, uh, living different cultures, eating different uh, food, that change, change, changes you a lot. And it's like constantly changing, you know, you never stop changing it and that's good. And um, uh, it makes part of my life nowadays, you know, I, and I, I like that, I respect that. I, I'm not afraid of changes and, um, and it makes part of myself. Totally. I, I, I don't know actually what I am. I would like to, to, to go through a machine or some kind of computer that would be like, that would separate uh, what came from like my DNA, what came from like what I, what I live at, what came from 
from what I listen and what came from what I read, that would be so cool to, to know about, you know, but, uh, but to totally, I think like touring and, and living different cultures that change me forever and it's in, it keeps changing me. Thank you, Sasha. Hopefully you're going to be back in Australia soon. Uh, Dan, was it true that you guys were almost arrested? Middle East, greens from Maceió. Aê, Maceió. Uh, man, yes, we were almost uh, arrested in, in Egypt, Egito, uh, in, in Cairo. Uh, we went there back in 2016, 2016, like four years ago. And we had some problem with, um, with the, the, the politicians, with the politics, local politics. The, the guys, they, the, 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 the country, they told us that we were like uh, subversives, that we were going against their laws, their, their culture, that we were go going against the, their religion. So the, we were like, uh, uh, we were like uh, invited to leave the country actually and uh the police they 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 went to the, the the place that we were supposed to play and they stopped all the crew from work so they they sent back the crew to the hotel and that was like a very like sad you know the the the, the guy that that was doing like the show that that uh that took us to egypt he was arrested the egyptian guy and man, that was terrible. And we had to leave the country. And we re recently, last year, we went to, we were supposed to play in, uh, oh, I forgot the name. Ah, but uh, yeah, that happened before. We, we were almost arrested in Egypt. Next, next question, Bruno, please. Last question, maybe? Gabriel Veras Orselli. Hey, Loy, the last two albums were incredibly good. What changed or inspired the band? Uh, I don't know what changed or inspired the band. You know, I, I believe uh, the first album that I did with Sepultura, The Mediator, uh, I felt a little bit anxious to do some, some like to create, to do music with the band. And, and maybe if you listen to the album, it's a very fast album. It's a very like intense raw and maybe it represents a little bit what i felt when i was recording that album um and uh the and the machine messiah the last one quadra uh i think i was more like relaxed to do music with the guys and we also also we we knew uh each other in uh each other in a, in a, in a better way you know like um and so we we were more like in we have a a, a better connection to compose to to do music, but I, I, I really like the, the three albums that I did with Sepultura, The Mediator. It's a very like unique, intense, like emotional album. And uh, the last two albums, they are also like Sepultura, you know, we, and actually we are never thinking when we do music, when we, when we are composing, the, we just do what we like to do. We, we, we are never, never thinking about that, you know, so we, we like changes they, they are good we are always changing and respecting what we are now we are living the, the now we are living the moment so and what inspired the band man i think like the, the quadra came out in a very good period you know like in a very good moment um like quadra is like the the the, the sport uh square like the, the this where you like play sports you know football whatever and um, and we live like in a in a society where we we have to follow the rules, we have to follow the laws. We we have like different people; they have like different religions and uh, different like beliefs, and that we rep represent what what we live in now. Like, what kind of freedom do we have? You know, what did we choose, though, or what like was chosen like for us? Actually, do we have any kind of freedom? So. So that like really uh, represents the, the moment that we are living, that we don't have a choice, that we just like need to, to stay at home, like isolation. And actually don't, we don't have like, any control about life. We like we, so that's why we need to, to be here, like 
like uh, doing whatever we like to do, having fun, trying to to like to have a, a fulfilling life, you know, like to whatever. But uh, that was it, man. Thank you, Gabriel, for sending the question. Let's have a couple more questions, then we we finish, right? All right. Have a good one here. Uh, Franz Quiroz, have you tried to write some lyrics? What do you think about? Franz, uh, no, actually, I, I never tried to write lyrics. But um, I'm always talking with Andreas like, and uh, with, with Derek about the lyrics. We all, always have like a discussion regarding the lyrics. Sometimes I'm, I'm writing like small uh, like texts, you know, like small like uh, phrases, you know, like sometimes I post on my Instagram some like small stuff that I write, but uh, I never thought about writing lyrics, but uh, I would love to. Maybe it's a, a next step, you know, the future step. Maybe I'll try to do it for the next time. Thank you, Franks. Franks Quiroz. And now, like the final question, right, Bruno? The best one needs to be like the the, the, the best one so far. No, I'm, I'm just kidding. All the questions, they were really good. <laughs> this is like another good one. Rafael Oliveira, and have you been, have you ever been invited to play with some other major band? Uh, no, no, that never happened. And uh, maybe someday, if like a major band, Black Sabbath or Metallica, they invite me to play. Why not? Like to to play one or two shows. I would love to do it, you know. But uh, but uh, I I have never like thought about like leaving Sepultura uh, in first place. Uh, I I believe like uh, I'd love to do like a, a participation like in a different band to do like uh, some shows or record an album. But uh, no, like I never like thought about leaving Sepultura. Okay, just to make it clear. <laughs> Last one. Atai, before you were a musician, did you have any plans to work on some other thing? No, actually, I never had any plan to do something else. Um, I always uh, felt like that I had so much freedom playing my instrument. So I, 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 I was always looking for like to have my own band, to do my own music. I think like, uh, I believe that uh, like to, to play covers, it's very good like for the learning process, but I never try to, to do my, my to, like, to, be, to become like what I am, like playing only covers. I had to do my thing, to do my stuff. So I have, all, I have always played like the stuff that I, I like to play. I also like do a joke like, uh, uh, saying that I'm not a professional musician because I play what I want to play. So like I'm not professional. I just do whatever I, I want to do. And um, and that that was it. Like today I think about it. If I like in the in a few years back, if, if I could choose a different job, um, what like would it be? And I think uh, I would like I love like to mechanics, like to like I love cars, like engine engine, you know. So. I love to be a make like a mechanic, something like that. I don't know, and uh, and that was that's it. But uh, I I never had like a, a a different idea about about getting a job. You know, I I have so much freedom on my instrument. Maybe that's the only place where actually I have some freedom in my life. So no, I don't. I I never like thought about like having a different job. Bruno, that's it. Let's invite us, our, our friends, like to subscribe to our channel here. You know. Oh yeah, yeah. So here is our website, and here on YouTube, please subscribe uh, at uh, at our channel. Like, like the the videos, and press the like button. If you don't like, press the dislike button. But uh, here, stay with us. We are here to to straight the connection uh, between the band and you. So we hope, hope, we hope you like it and uh, stay with us on the quartas, on the Wednesdays. You're going to be here, okay? So uh, in a, like, maybe in, like, in a few minutes, we're going to have 
the, the, the live playthrough of the song Refuse Resist. And uh, that was a song that we pre-recorded a few days ago. And uh, but it's like a, somehow it's like a, a live, live version of Refuse Resist. At, at least we are playing at our houses, at our home. And I hopefully you're going to like it. That's it. So thank you very much. In 10 minutes, we're going to just visit sepultura.com.br slash sepulquarta. And you're going to be able to watch Sepultura playing Refuse Resist. Thank you, Eloy. Thank you, Bruno. Thank you, all the fans all over the world. Thank you, Brazilian fans, for the support. And, and that's it. See you next Wednesday. And stay at your quadra. Don't leave your quadra if you are able to, of course. <laughs>